Well, <clears throat> thank you, Ingrid, for, for, for those, uh, those kind comments. And I must thank my mother as well for talking to you in advance so that she could have something nice to say about me. She was so thanks, to my, <laughs> thanks to my mother also. Um, and I, I, we can't proceed, of course, without saying something about Ingrid's performances outside government buildings over the years. And my sense of it was whenever I turned up for another day uh, to face the, the challenges that we faced, when Ingrid was there, you always had this extra sense of foreboding about what the day, what the day was going to bring, that maybe things were worse than we thought, and that there was another day of talks and proximity talks and talks about talks and all the rest of it. And I, I do have a recollection of bringing out coffee at one stage, but anyway, I might have been mistaken. I, I, no, you, I, I, you I, are I, mistaken. I would have remembered. Uh, I, 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 I must have been mistaken. I think it was uh, a former Prime Minister, Salisbury, who who was told that we're going, to, we're going to engage in some reform, and he said, are things not bad enough already? Um, <clears throat> but uh, things have changed because we're all in favour of public sector reform now. Everybody's in favour of it. And it's partly because uh, it means different things to different people and different organisations. And I was interested in Deputy Fleming and, and Che in, in putting some definition on what reform means. I think that's absolutely, absolutely critical. And I think it's important that even with reform, and even with significant reform, and we are embarking on this reform program now, that the fiscal consolidation is so significant that we are still going to have to make very difficult decisions in respect of capital projects, programs, uh, payroll issues, taxes, charges, and, and so on. So reform, and the need to do reform, is not a substitute for the other difficult decisions that we've spent some time talking about uh, the last two days. I think that's, that's clear. Part of our job in the, the new department is... Uh, is to an extent uh, highlight the challenges, but also to highlight the achievements of the, the public service. Like Large-scale strategic reform is needed, but this is not a reflection of failure per se, but a reflection of the need for us to do better and achieve more with less resources. We must respond to unfair criticism while accepting legitimate criticisms also uh, of the system. Uh, I was interested in what Eddie was saying. Eddie gave a quite restrained performance today. Uh, Eddie reminds me a bit of the, the Peter Clossy of, of management consultancy. He goes in with the hard tackles over the ball, the studs showing, uh, and all the rest. So I was sort of bracing myself, but I, it was okay. I shouldn't have brought the shin pads with me, really. I thought it, was, I thought it, was, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad, Eddie. Uh, but I think, uh, I think some of the criticisms I don't accept, uh, the caricature of the Irish Civil Service I don't accept, it's not the service that I know. The people that Eddie, in part, alluded to aren't the people that I know who I work with who show great commitment uh, for public service, great support uh, for the political system uh, and across the board. And the Irish Civil Service has a proud record. Uh, we helped to modernise this society and economy in the 50s and open it up to trade and open it up to the world, uh, due in part to the idealism and capacity of a small number of, of people in, in Department of Finance and other government departments. We helped to make the case for EU membership in the 60s and made that work in the 70s and 80s, and we helped to modernise, industrialise and modernise this economy over many generations. And there have been setbacks, as we all know, over the last, the last three or four years. But taking a, a wider span, there have been very clear achievements in terms of improvements in living standards, in terms of improving the quality of life of our citizens, and extending opportunities to our citizens. And that in part reflects my own view civil service and senior civil service and others and the political system working together over many years. So I don't accept what I think is sometimes an overly negative assessment. The wider public service uh, achieves much every single day. Every single day we have, for example, 800,000 children attending primary school and secondary school. Uh, it's fair to say that in most cases they come across very well committed, very trained, well trained professionals who do their best and provide an excellent service in educating our young people. We have over 150,000 students in higher education. We have built up this system within a very short period of time, in effect two generations, a very significant achievement. In response to the very significant rise in unemployment over the last few years, we put in place very significant places and opportunities for people to get retraining and, re and opportunities to access the labour market, and a very significant reorientation of spending in various government departments. Uh, the health service, and this may be controversial, because there are always difficulties in the health service. But just to give some facts, in 2010, there are 1.3 million inpatient and daycare cases. There are over 3.5 million outpatient attendees. Most people, when they can access this health system of over 100,000 people, are satisfied. 
Of course, we can and must do better, but the provision of the service for many people uh, is excellent. The Department of Social Protection uh, makes over 1.4 million payments each week as part of our social security net. Most of those payments, people receive them, they receive a service, and there are, there are, there are no problems. And in response to a very significant increase in population, an ongoing increase in population, and higher demand for services, we are managing to provide service across these, these areas with lower staff complement. But of course we must do better. But as part of us doing better on reforming, we must engender a renewed sense of pride in our work as public servants. Dedication and commitment must be recognised, as well as poor performance uh, being addressed. And this is essential for change. We can't get people to change, change their work practices, change the way they're doing business, if they're being told all the time that they're no good. If they were to read The Independent on a Sunday, uh, they wouldn't bother going to work at all the next day, let alone involve themselves in a serious programme of change. We must also communicate better and open up the system to the citizens and stakeholders to give their feedback on the services that we provide. As part of the review process into spending, we received over 750 suggestions on how we could reshape and remodel the public service. I can't tell you <clears throat> all of what's been suggested, as you can imagine. We can't really, we'll have to do a culling on some of the, the responses. Uh, but there are very interesting ideas and engagement with, with citizens. Our new department uh, has key, three key uh, priorities, and I won't go through all this because others have spoken about it. Firstly, the achievement of the government's overall fiscal targets and regaining our economic sovereignty as quickly as possible. Public service reform, which I'll touch on in some detail, and reform of the political system. Eddie mentioned this, there's a very significant reform in terms of FOI, whistleblowers legislation, reforms to ethics, to change the relationship between the civil service and the political system, and to introduce further levels of openness and, and transparency. Our own department and its establishment provides an opportunity to drive the implementation of many of the public service reform elements. And it's fair to say that reform and the transforming public service agenda has not delivered as was expected. We produced reports but failed to deliver in respect of any of the recommendations, despite the successes that we have seen in organisations like Revenue and Social Protection. In the past there was uncertainty about who was responsible uh, for reform. Uh, it was sent spread across two departments, the Taoiseach's Department and the old Department of Finance. Uh, reform was not seen as a single portfolio of clear alignment and ownership, and a disconnect existed between decisions in respect of spending and the Treasury function of the Department of Finance and the reform agenda. There was also a stronger focus on policy, but less so uh, on delivery. But we now have a new beginning, and we now have the conditions which are, which are in place to deliver on the reform agenda. A new government with a strong mandate, a senior minister uh, in the shape of Brendan Howland with responsibility reform sitting around uh, the government table, a new structure uh, within the department and within government. And also a very in clear imperative for us to reduce public service numbers and to, to reduce spending to meet our fiscal consolidation goals. So a very significant need for us to make the difficult decisions and to reform in order to provide a basic level of service as we retrench. People uh, asked about the vision. What is the vision of the public service? Shay mentioned it, others have been put to us. I think we need to be blunt about what the vision is for the foreseeable future. It's going to be a smaller public service, a good deal smaller. We've reduced numbers from around 320,000 to 300,000, and we're going to have to reduce those numbers again, probably somewhere between 275 and 280,000. There will be a reduced number of organisations, a smaller number of organisations, and reconfiguration of those organisations, and we will have to do better for a good deal less. We also have to improve organisation and individual performance, and be more focused on consumers and citizens and businesses, and to ensure the interaction between the state and business and citizens are as simple as possible. Overall, and this I think is the critical part, we need a unified and integrated public service. We need to stop looking at the service as agency here, department here, we need to look at it as an integrated, unified service. And we also need to see change as part of business as usual, as part of an ongoing culture, where change is not something which is which is radical, but which is part of the everyday, uh, part of what we do. We also need, as part of this, and this has been a failing in the past in terms of reform programmes, we need to set clear targets, have clear performance indicators, set out critical success factors and milestones for, for progress. 
and we even able to show and demonstrate clearly the results, what we're actually achieving, so people can have confidence in the programme and see that we're making the progress and we're delivering on what we say we'd set out. Uh, Crow Park uh, agreement, much has been said. We've had the first annual review. Shay touched on it, and I won't go into to it in much detail. Crow Park is a significant enabler of this change. And for, for the government on the management side to maximise the benefits of Crow Park, the reform programme needs to be accelerated. So Crow Park will be a success if it's used and if it's got given the opportunity to show that the flexibilities are there to reconfigure in a way which makes a difference. A part of all this, of course, is the spending review. And we are going through uh, each line of spending again uh, and asking quite simple questions. Is this a priority for the government in the context of the cutbacks and expenditure that are required? Within the reduced envelope that we will have over the next few years, is this a priority? And that will raise very difficult questions across all government departments. But if it is a priority, can we deliver this service in a different way? Are there options for us to do it differently? In terms of the reform agenda, uh, our department's role is to integrate spending and reform, is to drive cross-cutting initiatives, and is to put in place a reporting mechanism where the individual measures at sectoral level uh, are merged with the cross-cutting uh, whole-of-government approach. We are now setting out a very detailed uh, implementation plan uh, for reform in each sector and across the government. And I would like to just touch on some of the things that we are working on now and some of the overarching cross-cutting issues that we will be driving in our department. There will have to be a renewed focus on e-government. We need to make more government information and services available online. We already have 300 services online, which is very significant, but we need to do more. We need to increase the take-up of electronic services and self-service facilities wherever we can. And we need to ensure maximum utilisation of the new public services card which has been introduced. There is great scope with this card to have wide applicability throughout the, the, the public service to ensure uh, more efficient delivery uh, of services. We need to publish information on the availability and performance of, of key services as a key element of what we do. We also need to embrace data sharing, as the Deputy mentioned. When citizens interact with a government agency or a department, uh, if they give their information, they shouldn't be asked for the same information time and time again. And we need to address issues around data protection. Uh, but if we can crack some of these issues, there is great scope to use data more efficiently and to make the experience for the citizens that bit better. We need to rationalise core processes and structures that are duplicated across the public service. We're going to establish shared services operations in a whole variety of areas, HR, payroll, pensions, finance, and have shared service centres providing services that are currently now provided by hundreds of organisations uh, diffusely around the system. Uh, and this will be a major restructuring of the public service, and the civil service, the state sector, but also local authorities, health, education, and so on. We need to look at business process improvements and change the way we deal with processes, particularly high volume transaction processes, which are prevalent across many parts of the service. We need to introduce more market contestability and provide opportunities for competition in the provision of services that were previously uh, provided solely by the public service. Uh, and we need to look at the issue of, of third party providers in that context. Public procurement. We have set up the National Procurement Service, which has achieved much in terms of, of savings. We need to go further and aggregate uh, the consumption and the procurement of services and products across the public service. We spent 15 billion on, on, on procurement and we need to move to a situation where we have close to 100% managed participation in the National Procurement Service. We need to modernise the management of our property assets across the system. We have very significant assets across a whole variety of different agencies, and we need to centralise and manage those and make decisions in terms of, of leases, uh, disposals, and how we're, going to, how we're going to manage the stock of our assets and our footprint in the context of a much smaller public service. We also need to rationalise organisations and look at issues like the means tests, which happen across, as, as the Deputy mentioned, a number of different organisations, and establish an authority which would do that, which currently is done by a number of departments, which would be done by a single authority. And we need to have a similar approach to issues like inspections and licensing and other services, which are again provided across many different types of organisations. 
Organisational performance needs to be improved by extending performance budgeting, which in effect integrates uh, the annual estimates, which sets out the spending of each government department, with the outputs and outcomes that we're trying to achieve for that. In the past, we produced a book of estimates which said, this is what we're going to spend, and we didn't set out what we're hoping to achieve from that spending. So from the next book of estimates that will be published in the new year, we'll be setting out not only what we're spending, but what we're going to achieve in terms of outputs and outcomes across the entire system. This would be a very significant departure, which will enable people to see exactly what they're, what they're getting uh, for taxpayers' money, and also enable much more effective scrutiny by Dáil committees of the votes when they come before Dáil committees. We need to move to multi-annual budgeting for both current and capital spending and have more devolution of budgets within those, uh, those multi-annual caps. We also intend to publish all purchase orders of more than 20,000. So every purchase that we make over 20,000 we're going to publish on the various websites so people can see exactly what we're spending and how we're spending their money. We need to enhance leadership uh, in a variety of different ways in terms of mobility and Shay mentioned the need for greater mobility, and we agree absolutely uh, with that. We need better skills and different skills in terms of change management and project management. We need to look and address the issue of underperformance, which is a serious problem within parts of the civil service and the wider public service. Uh, we also need, in order to improve performance, we need better data. Uh, HealthStat, uh, which a number of people here I'm sure are familiar with, HealthStat data is a very impressive system which sets out the performance of hospitals. We need to look at something similar for local authorities, for education, for the civil service to provide that basic information so citizens can see how well are the different units of government performing. Now, of course, as part of all this and as part of the numbers policy, we need to have very significant redeployment and very radical redeployment measures across all sectors and not just within sectors uh, of the public service. Of course, Agreeing uh, to change and what needs to be done is one thing, making it happen is another thing. And structures are key. We've established within our new department a dedicated reform and delivery office which we give responsibility for this reform agenda. We are now developing a team to deliver on this and last Friday we put an advertisement in the papers for a programme director who would head up and lead this office. We're going to be undertaking appointments across a wide variety of different areas over the next few months. Culture is important. Uh, maybe we're maxed out after hearing Eddie uh, <laughs> on culture, uh, but it is, it, is, it is key, and it's the most difficult thing to manage uh, in the system, but it's also the mo most important. We need to change attitudes. We need to embrace a much more open, flexible, and service-centred form of, of, of public service. We need to win hearts and minds of people and convince them that we're putting in place new structures and processes to empower and to ensure that people take ownership of this process. We also need to have appropriate risk taking and risk management and to support managers in taking tough decisions. And need, we need champions of change across the system. In terms of change management and taking risks, we have to accept that there will be mistakes and there will be failures. And rather than punishing individuals or punishing parts of the system for taking risk, manage risk and do things differently, we need to accept that there will be mistakes and need to learn from those mistakes. And I think that's going to involve a different relationship between government departments and senior civil servants and Oireachtas committees that we have a mature dialogue about how we go about our business. So reforming this system of 300,000 people at hundreds of organisations will be very significant and difficult but it needs to be done. And it's important that all public servants understand that this is a shared undertaking, a shared task. We need to keep in mind our ultimate goal which is absolutely essential the achievement of a public service that is integrated, that is efficient and effective, and ultimately a public service that focuses on the citizen and everything it does, and a public service of which we can all be proud. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Robert.